Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode four of the Performance Playbook, and today I will be on my own. I'll be doing a monologue or a rant, whatever you want to call it. Um, the This first topic is going to be on barefoot shoes. Kind of has to be on barefoot shoes. This was what led me into the craziness of me kind of pushing against the grain that I would call it. Um, this started about close to five years ago now, and it completely changed a lot of how I saw things when it came to health and wellness performance, um, and that being less is more. And we see that with a lot of our we see that with a lot of our things that we implement within our lives, specifically the shoes that we wear. At least I've been able to see that. And so this podcast, I'm going to talk about how I got into them. Who do I recommend it for? What's the utility? The goal here isn't to sell you a product, but more so to inform you on an idea. And with that being said, uh, we can kind of build an idea around why you would be interested in getting these, why I was interested in getting these, and you know why this has played a big role for me. So let's jump into it. How did I get into barefoot shoes? So I have had patellar tendonitis in my knees since my junior year of high school. That's roughly around nine years now. Yikes, aging myself here. Um, but I've had it for about nine years. Has it gotten substantially better? Yes, but that's, that's, there was a huge learning curve that, that needed to be had, which, which happened roughly around four and a half, five years ago. So, you know, originally I went to a lot of athletic trainers, uh, physical therapists, doctors. We did that for the first four years. And nothing really changed. I actually just kind of like capped out. I was able to dive ish, but not to the extent that I ever used to or to what most people are used to uh, on a daily basis. And so, you know, I was wearing uh, knee straps to get through certain, through most practices or um, taking a certain amount of anti-inflammatory drugs. It just wasn't working. And so I, you know, I did everything I could. I would go to uh, different doctors. I would talk to different physical therapists, athletic trainers, the the doctors that I was being put towards uh, originally um, kind of gave me the first option of, well, we can give you this naproxen or we can give you surgery. And that's about all you have. Uh, and of course I'm going to say no to surgery because you don't really come back too well from knee surgery for most athletes. It just kind of, kind of ruins you. Um, and I didn't have time to get taken out for that long. And so, yeah, I said yes to the naproxen, which is just a very strong anti-inflammatory drug, which ran through my stomach and just, it, it caused more bad than good. And, uh, I ended up stop I had to stop taking it because of stomach issues and then again it's it wasn't doing anything um I mean if you think about a lot of those drugs right and especially now that they've kind of seen what these drugs do it's just cutting off the inflammatory phase and then you're also just masking the pain and so I'm just pushing my knee to a point to where it wasn't really supposed to be going and I was just in this never ending loop of getting worse or stagnating. Um, and I didn't know why, because I'm, I'm doing all of the physical therapy, I'm doing the strength training, but somehow I'm either getting worse or stagnating. And it was frustrating. And so again, I, I look at all of the people that I've been put with and worked with, um, and I, I don't blame them at all for uh, what they've done or uh, what we've worked with, because again, they learned this is what they learned. Um, I'm I've run through the same experience with uh, strength and conditioning and my my process here. And you start to talk to certain coaches. And again, if you if you learn within a little tiny box, it's hard to go outside of that unless you're willing to. 
And so most people will just go on to um, provide people with their knowledge in this little box. And so if the if there's been any sort of changes outside of these parameters, then uh, they either don't know about it or they don't accept it because it wasn't in this that they learned. Um, inherently, that's the problem in my mind with a lot of strength and conditioning, physical therapy, athletic training, even uh, a lot with our doctors is not to say that it's lazy, but they, uh, they're they usually behind. Um, and we see this clearly with uh, icing versus heating, uh, again, a lot with the anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, it's just behind. It's It's lacking um a lot of updates and so that kind of led me into doing my own searching for myself and i found this random rabbit hole of barefoot shoes just to give a little context here every time i would take off my shoes again me being a uh, platform diver we're, we're jumping off of a very sturdy uh, most cases a cement platform and so if you're barefoot and it doesn't feel good being barefoot um, I used to take off my shoes and when I would get onto our dry land training facility, uh, I would get like a shock through my feet up to my shins every time. And so my, my feet were very weak. And when you get put into an athletic training um, room or with just whoever, they will check above and below, which is good. It's very good information, right? Because it's not always... The problem's not always the the pain point. It might be above or below. And so somewhere within that chain, there's a problem. And so we would check my, I think I got my ankle checked once. Does it move well? Cool. Good. Move on. Let's look at the hip. And then the assumption is, oh, it's the hips that aren't um, strong enough or, you know, the quad to hamstring um ratios off your patellar tendon itself is weak which are all valid good things but the foot and the ankle were looked at for maybe two minutes max and a part of the problem was oh, my main uh i mean it's the first thing that touches the ground right and so if you know your first contact with anything is super weak uh it's going straight up the kinetic chain and wherever that pain point is going to find itself, your lower back, uh, postural problems, or just your ankle, in my case, my knee. And so once I found this, this rabbit hole and started really looking into it and seeing the comparisons, let's say, to the Chinese foot binding um, and our current culture of how we just like narrow toed shoes, you start to see the issues with what you know, a lot of people have been dealing with. And so if you can think about the Chinese foot binding, if you know what that is, if you don't, you know, a quick explanation is they used to take um, young women in China and young women, young children, and they would tie their feet into these shoe looking, like high heeled shoe looking uh, feet. So like they literally had to break the bones and tie up these feet to look like that. And you can only imagine the repercussions that they had to deal with going on forward with feet like that. And so do we have the same thing? No, we don't. Not even close. But we are dealing to an extent with problems because of what our culture deems uh, beautiful, cool. And, um, you know, I kind of felt those effects. And if you think about these big brands, name X, Y, or Z, uh, a lot of them have big cushions underneath the heel. And then we we have a really narrow toe box. And so now we are we are doing a similar thing, right? Obviously not as extreme, but the, the heel comes up. So you're, um, you're not using your Achilles tendon in the range of motion that it's used to. And then your toe box is squished. And so your toes aren't spread out properly. And you could look at issues like people having chronically tight Achilles tendons or the bottom of their feet, similar to mine, because we have this cushion underneath our foot. Um, the bottom of our feet are just weak. And then the toes, you're, you're now taking away your balance point, right? Having those toes spread. So the arch of your foot's going to collapse a little bit. People will get bunions. There's a lot of problems that actually do come from this. 
And so I really tried to dive in as well as I could. And with the information that was out there roughly around five years ago, and it was a interesting jump, right? Because when you get into something like this, it's very against the culture's, uh, we'll call it dress code, right? You're going to look weird. You look down and there's this super wide toe box, which looks like a clown shoe. And for some reason back then, the designers were just piss poor. And so they leaned into the clown shoe look, baffling to me. But um, I dove into this realm and started my journey um, with barefoot shoes. And this whole podcast is going to be more so anecdotal evidence. Um, if you go in the PubMed, there's a bunch of research articles that you can see on how actually barefoot um, walking is better for the human body. I don't know why that's just like a, a new thing that should just be basic information if you just think about it. Um, we were built over these millions of years to have the feet that we do now. Why do we need this extra technology to aid our walking? Um, again, I like to think about a lot of things though. Logic is found within the middle, right? So I'm not saying get rid of and throw away all your shoes. That's actually not that's the last thing I'm saying. But how can we look at what you're wearing uh, consistently that affects you? So if you really like going out in whatever shoe that you like going out in, and it has that same heel raise uh, and narrow uh, toe box, this is fine. But what are we wearing consistently throughout the day that could actually benefit us instead of kind of take away from what our natural foot um, should be moving and functioning? And so, again, I'm not trying to sell you on any product, just more so the idea of why I transitioned over to barefoot shoes. So once I finally transitioned over, um, I started feeling some really good benefits because when my heel, so when anyone's heel is up, right, your posture is going to be forced to lean forward. Um, if you're just looking at the body, the posterior chain is the backside and the anterior chain is the front side. And so we are all leaning forward. And so all of your weight is forced to come up the anterior chain of your body. And so instead of just being your weight pushed down through your mid your midfoot. And so when you're driving through the floor, let's call it barefoot, you actually have to use your posterior chain, which is good. That's what we want. Um, the opposite of that, right? The inverse is you have an artificial press up into your heel. And so it is aiding you in that process. And so you actually like your hamstrings are being aided. And so they're actually not working as they should or as much as they should. And this is why I think a lot of athletes or just everyone in general is way more quad dominant than they they should be. And so you're actually starting to see little stories. I saw some football player. I, I probably should have like wrote his name down, but as of recently, he's been kind of uh, thrown up in the media because he walks everywhere barefoot. Um, and they're saying it's weird and it's different, but it's, I think it is literally just that it's just different. And it's funny to think that, you know, humans just doing what they were built to do is different in today's age. But with that logic, um, we're so used to technology being so advanced that anything that is new coming out is, well, that's what we should be doing, right? It's this consistent progress. Um, and what I've learned is more so less is more. And so sometimes we need to take two steps back to take one logical step forward. Uh, and I think it's kind of funny too, because the human foot itself is an incredible piece of technology. I mean, the amount of muscles, bones, and joints within the foot to make it work properly isn't actually incredible. And so by taking, you know, away its natural functioning by putting, uh, this foam pad underneath and then raising the heel, shrinking the toes, uh, you take away you know, all of its capacity to do what it's meant to do properly. And so uh, you see athletes like this that are kind of starting to get some, some recognition, specifically him because he's in the NFL. But um, I, I think it's great. And more people are starting to see these brands and, and hear this message. And it's fantastic. Um, so just to give you an idea of 
where I'm going with this, but to jump back to the story of how I got into it, um, it plays into my next point of how can we ease our way into, into wearing these shoes? And I did not do that well. And so when I first found out about barefoot shoes and what it might potentially do for me, I was very excited. And if anyone who's listening knows me, uh, I like to just go head into everything just a hundred percent. Um, with barefoot shoes, you should not do that, especially if you've been wearing non barefoot shoes your entire life. Um, some people might push back and go, well, you're, you're a barefoot, sh- like, you're a barefoot sport. So, uh, it shouldn't be that bad of a transition. I think that's completely wrong. I think it's completely wrong because we're barefoot during our sport, but think about the years I'm 26. Uh, we get put into school systems. Let's just say at, uh, you know, five, six years old. Um, I'm wearing these shoes for 20 or so years. And so even if it was for, uh, let's just say the school day and I took them off instantaneously and didn't wear shoes the rest of the day, which wasn't the case, but let's just say I was wearing them for six hours a day for 20 years, like there will be adaptation that will happen. And so to walk that back is going to take a really, really long time. And so easing our way in to you know, manage how our foot's been treated for, let's just say 20 years, um, it's going to take a bit. And so I was, uh, we'll say smart enough to not like the goal, right, would be to progressively overload our foot with this, with the amount of uh, barefoot walking, right? It's like strength training, like to, to see growth and to see improvement, you want to take take it step by step. You don't want to just throw 400 pounds on your back for a back squat, you'll die. But to progress our bodies to get to that point is how we do it. And so you want to do the same thing with your foot. Um, I went to Yosemite and backpacked half dome or just hiked half dome, which is roughly 18 to 20 miles barefoot, not like literally barefoot, but like with barefoot shoes. And that was the first week of me wearing these shoes. I think it was like four days in super, super backwards and not the way you should do it, but I was excited and I was so sick of my knees being always swollen, um, having this chronic aching, I I couldn't stand it. And so the only way for me to make a change in my mind back then was to just completely cut out these shoes. Um, thankfully I was on a vacation and so Um, even if I did something stupid, like going on an 18 to 20 mile hike, um, and knowing that I was going to be sore after it's, it's okay because I can sit back, sit off my feet and I don't have to train, which would, you know, add up onto the pounding that I just did on my feet. And so, you know, the moral of the story here is jumping into something like this, uh, should take time. So just to kind of form an idea for you, if you wear uh, padded shoes, let's just call it a Nike shoe uh, every single day, uh, and then you come home and wear some form of slides, we'll make it the most extreme example. At all points, you're being aided by this padding instead of actually allowing your foot to be on the floor and get some form of uh, natural pounding, we'll call it, or natural stimulus to the bottom of your foot to make it stronger. Um, a great example is if you broke your arm and we threw you in a cast, but just kept you in the cast, what's going to happen? Your arm's going to atrophy like crazy and have no movement, uh, in that joint. And then you're gonna have no muscle. And so essentially that's kind of what we have with our feet. It's not as extreme because we do still move them in these shoes, Um, but it's just not to the extent that the foot actually needs. And so you are, we'll call you this extreme example. The best way to ease you into this, I would say is just to take the slides off at home. It's a very easy way to do it. Take the slides off at home. And then every time you're at home, see how you feel. Do your knees, your ankles, your low back feel better? If that's one of a, uh, one of the few problems that you have, if you don't have any problems, how does the bottom of your foot feel? Does it feel kind of sore? If it doesn't, then great. But if it does, that's kind of a blinking red red flag. Like, hey, like we've got an issue here. Like this, your baseline hurts. Your 
supposed baseline hurts, that's that's not a good sign. And so the best way to address that is to ease our way in. So take off the slides at home and consistently start being barefoot. And once that feels good enough, then we take the next step. If you, let's say, lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think a great way to implement barefoot training or barefoot walking in general is to use it in the weight room. Okay, so then now you just change your shoes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and at home. As you can see, I'll let you build and form out the rest of that idea, but is to incrementally build upon that. Uh, one thing that I did want, and I typed this down because I think it's kind of funny, but uh, one thing a lot of people have to get over is kind of the social aspect of wearing these shoes. Um, obviously, I lightly brought this up at the start, but I, you know, I was wearing them roughly four to five years ago when they weren't as popular. I still don't think they're super popular, but they're a hell of a lot more common um, now than they were then. And then thankfully, the designs have gotten substantially better to where they kind of look more um, like our Western shoes, which aren't super wide, but they still have a fairly wide toe box, but they look more like Vans or whatever. You can find a lot better designs out there. But still, you have to get over that that mental piece of, you know, people are going to judge me and it's going to look weird. But at some point, for me at least, right, is I was looking for any percentage of, of increase in performance or just relief from pain. And so if you kind of find yourself within that box, I would, you know, I'd push you to at least start being barefoot more frequently. And then if that does feel good enough and you are enticed, then from there, start to look into these products. Um, and I'll let you go on your own little rabbit hole there because uh, there's much better reviews that will that will take you in a great direction. That's that's not the point of this this podcast. So that is something to think about is, hey, like I'm going to have to ease my way in. But, you know, one big thing I, I like to think about is, you know, someone might look at it and critique you or say your shoes look weird. but just remember it's it's them just being insecure or you know projecting that like you're wearing something different and i don't do that so like i'm going to you know throw that towards you because i don't know what's going on so it's not always a bad thing they just it's different and so um you can either educate them on why you're wearing them and if you just explain hey it makes me feel 3 to 5% better uh, especially it makes my knees feel 3 to 5% better you know, they might be like, oh, I guess that makes sense. And you could probably agree, like, yeah, it's not the greatest looking shoe, but uh, I do feel better. And so that's why I'm going to start wearing them. Uh, they might join along. I've had a lot of scenarios like that with uh, friends and family that were actually enticed once I told them how much better my feet feel, how much better the ground feels, uh, my my low back and my my knees feel just substantially better. You actually start to see their their ears kind of perk up and uh, they get interested. And so a lot of um, my aiding with people getting into this barefoot realm is just explaining what it's done for me. It's just as simple as that. And so that is kind of the social part of uh, getting over wearing the barefoot shoes. But I don't think it's that hard in today's age because they are way more popular. I'm not saying they're popular. But they're more popular. If you went to just a regular gym, there is the opportunity that you'd actually see someone wearing these shoes. Uh, you really wouldn't see that four or five years ago. I mean, you'd really, and I wore them all the time. Uh, I feel like I could probably count on the on one hand the amount of times I would see someone wearing these shoes in one to two years. And now I can see it almost on a weekly basis, which is sweet. Um, people are kind of actually learning and educating themselves on again, walking a little bit backwards um, to what we've been given and the technology that we have just within our body um, to kind of rebuild back on that. Uh, so again, why should you get a pair? And uh, I always go to, if, if you're not feeling any pain or you're having zero problems within your ankles, your knees, your low back, you feel like your posture is kind of weird. Great. That's good. Uh, then maybe you don't feel the necessity to look at this. And that's fine. That's not that big of a deal. But if you do have any of these problems, I would encourage you to go down this road because I just look, think about a tree, 
right? If the bottom of a tree, a ginormous uh, sequoia, if the bottom of that tree is super thin, like it's going to snap and fall. And we're kind of the same thing. If the base of your uh, foundation is weak, your feet, your ankles, then, you know, you're going to have problems go up that kinetic chain. And so um, give it a look. If you think that you just want to increase your performance and you don't have any pain, uh, that'd be another reason for me to get into it if I didn't have any issues because I love just trying to always progressively get better. That is another reason to look into these shoes because now you're just making the bottom of your feet stronger. You're making your toes um, more mobile. You're Again, you're mobilizing your Achilles tendon because when you are wearing these shoes, your Achilles tendon is in a very shortened position. And so when you bring it back onto the, the floor, you actually are lengthening that Achilles tendon to where it should be um, naturally. And so for some people jumping into barefoot shoes, the reason why I really make sure or at least push you to uh, ease into these shoes is some people have the tendency to get, oh, yeah, my Achilles tendon feels really tight. I'm working it a lot. It doesn't feel that great. Well, that's just an indicator that your body is uh, adapting. So pain isn't always bad. It's just a it's just a signal for your body that adaptation is happening. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're making these changes and easing your way into these shoes is um, there's going to be kind of a, a learning curve for your body to get over this uh, kind of pain or just uncomfortable state. Um, who do I think should get these as soon as possible? This is where I go logic's in the middle, but now I'm kind of pushing that out the door and going against that logic. Um, and I have, again, anecdotal stories that I would push towards this, um, and non-anecdotal stories if you look at just the statistics of older individuals. But I think elderly should be wearing barefoot shoes. Uh, you see a lot of the times... Uh, the death rate like skyrockets once an older individual falls. Falling is a very big issue with an elderly. And so if you think about it, if you have these really big padded shoes underneath your feet and you can't feel anything, uh, you don't know if there's going to be a bump. You just can't feel the floor. And you're taking out these, I mean, one of the biggest sensory receptors in our body is the bottom of our of our feet. And so if you completely take that away from someone, then they're kind of just scooting blind. Um, again, older individuals don't have the same uh, strength within their hip flexors, and so you'll see a lot of scooting. And so if you can at least add a barefoot shoe, um, they have a better tendency to feel what's beneath them. And so my, my mom and I were talking about this because this is what kind of happened to my grandpa. Uh, one or two years before he died was he fell and it was a really bad fall. Um, if I'm correct, he was hospitalized because of that fall. And so, and we watched his health skyrocket in a, not skyrocket, but dip right after um, that fall. And I think it's a very important thing to press loved ones is, hey, if we want to see not your lifespan, but your health span increase, uh, I would recommend wearing barefoot shoes. And again, think about that same learning curve for an older individual. It's going to take a really long time for them to progress into these barefoot shoes. So you have to start a lot slower because now you look at uh, my example was 20 years, right? But theirs is 50, 60, like fair, like a lot of time wearing shoes that have crunched and shortened Achilles tendon, the feet. So you might see a lot of issues with their feet, but at the same time, you might be able to see a lot of increase with, um, you know, their health and how they feel. So that is kind of the big, uh, that's my big spiel on wearing barefoot shoes. Now, if you have any specific questions or concerns Leave them in the comment section and I will respond and we can have a discussion. If you want more of a scientific uh, review of this, um, I know there's some people out there that would be super fun to have on the podcast. So if that is interesting to you, again, let me know down below. And then if you like these rants, uh, I definitely want to keep going. So let me know. If you don't like these rants, 
I'm still going to do them. So let me know and uh, we can have a discussion there. But I think the next rant that I plan on doing is on heating and icing. So if we think about dogmatic thinking, this is where it gets pretty spicy. But again, it's it's a cool and a fun conversation. This is another thing that had um, aided me in my uh, recovery with my patellar tendonitis. Uh, and I still kind of follow the format that I do today. But with that being said, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, please keep joining. Uh, like this, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you soon. Have a great day.